For many players, soloing a dungeon seems like a tall order. It's a three-man activity, there's usually lots of ads, there's boss required DPS, and there's survivability. But in this video, I'm going to go over how you can easily, anyone, can solo the Prophecy Dungeon in Destiny 2. This is a super fun dungeon, one of my favorites, and with using the, the techniques I teach you in this video, anybody can literally solo this dungeon. First off, all the footage you're going to see is me using a build that I'll link in the description of my Archoner. You don't have to use Archoner. There's plenty of other options. Warlocks has a lot of survivability, so does Titan. But the reason I like this build is because it allows me to become visible, which ultimately when things can't see you, they can't kill you. In addition to that, when you're doing DPS in some of these dungeons and you're trying to survive, you want to be able to use supers either do burst damage or you want to do supers that do damage over time. And with having Gathering Storm, that's something where at worst case, even in a damage phase, if you completely screw up DPS, you know you're going to have guaranteed damage because you should be able to get your super back between most DPS phases within a dungeon encounter. The other comment I'll make before I get to the next part of the video is, obviously I use a build that uses um, Assassin's Cow, and somebody's like, well, I don't have that. And you'll even say, I don't have some of these weapons. What I would tell you is that Assassin's Cow or any exotic is pretty easy to get right now. You can either focus Ingrams, you can do the public event that is on Neomuna. If you have that expansion, you can use Lost Sectors. There's plenty of easy ways to get the exotics. And with focusing, you can get the exact exotic you want right now. The weapons I use for DPS also are exotics. and In many cases, raid exotics or raid, uh, raid legendaries. Those are not required. They just allow me to do da damage faster. The key to any of these encounters is about surviving. So if you don't have these and it takes another DPS phase to finish off the boss, what's the big deal with that? The big key is to make sure you survive. For this first encounter, you will use a lot of the same mechanics that we use later in the dungeon. You'll notice that there is a door that prevents you going from the next to the next area. That door will not open until you cleanse two plates, a light one and a dark one that are at the end of the room. To do this, you have to kill Taken Knights to drop moats, similar to what you get in Gambit, based on whether your character is in a light area or a darkness area. This can be hard to see. So one thing you can do is if you pay attention to your lower left-hand corner, you'll notice like a little glow. And it'll either be white or black. That'll tell you whether you're in darkness. And you have to kill the enemy. It doesn't matter where the enemy is. It matters where you are. So the enemy could be in dark. If you're in light and you shoot him and kill him and he's in light, you're going to get light modes. That's one thing to keep in mind. You need five modes to cleanse a plate, and each knight drops three. If you pick up three dark first, for instance, and then actually pick up light, it will wipe out the dark modes and basically give you the same count of light modes that you picked up. So again, that's one thing you have to be careful about where you kill things and what you're picking up. Also, the modes are on a timer, just like in Gambit, and when you pick them up, there's a timer on you as well before they'll expire. So you can't wait forever to get all five to cleanse. To cleanse, go to the plate in question, and for most per people, depending on your setup, on your controller or your keyboard, you're going to hit the grenade button to cleanse. Once you finish cleansing these two plates, the door will open and you'll be presented with another error that's exactly the same. Rinse and repeat, do the same type of mechanics, finish up those two plates, and then you'll move through the door and you'll notice that the, the Kel Echo, who's the boss for the whole dungeon, will start going down the hallway and you'll chase him up a bunch of different jumping areas to the next encounter. This next encounter is a Phalanx Echo. It's a big boss with a immunity shield that you have to take off. So to do that, you have to cleanse four plates that are on pillars. There are two dark and two light. The mechanics for getting these plates and cleansing them work exactly like the mechanics that you learned in the first encounter. It is possible to mid-air get both plates, whether dark or light, at the same time it's kind of hard to do. I'm not going to show you in this video. If you do it, it will shorten this encounter. Also, keep in mind, as you're cleansing plates, the arena itself will shift, changing where the dark and light is and also risking you knocking you off because there's kind of these spinny things that will move. So again, just be really careful with that. The other thing is the boss in question has a boop attack. And if you see him, this is one of the reasons being invisible is nice. If you see him, he has a chance to boop you off. And if you're using swords, which that's one thing I'll talk about as far as weapons for this encounter, obviously that will help you out if you do get booped off. That's, again, why it's really important to use terrain to cover yourself. Once all the plates are done, it is time for damage. 
Sticking a burst super or a damage over time super is great here because again, it's like free damage. And then I'm using Acrius with Surges, which I'm doing my punch, and I'm using Acrius to basically do a ton of damage to him. Keep in mind in mid fight, there will be additional taken at spawn and they will shield him. So make sure you take them out. One thing that's great about the build that I'm using is because I do a jolt and I kind of do some extra arc damage um, as I'm killing enemies, I can actually take out a lot of these with just melee really, really quickly versus having to shoot them, which allows me to focus on DPS. If you don't have something like Acrius, um, again, you can use other shotguns as well, legendary shotguns too, especially one-two punch for this build. The swords also work really well. Lamet works really well. So if you want to do a solar build, um, you could do Lamet. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to use your weapon matching your build because you can use surges of different types. Even if you have an arc build, you could use solar surges. So again, tons of options, but close-up damage is what you're going to try to focus on. Next is the Wastelands. This area is an open space where you can sparrow between zones. To understand the arena, check out this map that shows the locations. I didn't make this, but skulls are potential places for blights, and you can see where you spawn in and where you exit. There is a secret chest that's in the arena in a spot where is gold sand. If you see that, you just go underneath. Generally keep left from where you came in to find that. The other thing is there is a hidden boss that you don't do any damage or kill. You just it's the it's the boss from the very end and he'll kind of follow you around. He will tend to hang out there. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you want to get that chest. You'll notice a, a glowing orb that's Toland, which will give you some messages and stuff like that. He will just show up generally and tell you where to go. You, he will tell you the next area by the direction in which he zooms away when you take out a blight. So you take out a blight, he'll go left, right, or wherever. If you generally follow the direction, you'll see the next area that you need to do. Each area has a few blights to take out as well as some snipers. The snipers can be a pain, so sniper protection is ideal here. And if you can take them out, feel free to do those to be as safe as possible. You don't have to, but they can be kind of annoying. Remember for Blights, you can stand on top of the Blight and avoid damage and take the Blight down. So you don't have to be underneath and you can also avoid the adds that way. Finish the Blights in one area and watch Tolan tell you where to go next. Once you do this three times, a door will open to the next room. There are two places where the dorm can be, but you will be able to tell which because Tolan will show you the way to go. If you go to one of the towers and it isn't open, then it's going to be the other one on the side of the map. Again, they're kind of opposite of each other. The cube or uh, hexahedron. For this encounter, and this one's really a trippy encounter, you will see four platforms that are darker light in an area that is lit up above them. You will also see Tolan in one of those areas that's lit up. You again, up higher. Whichever one he's above, you need to cleanse that platform with the corresponding dark or light color that's on that platform. If you don't see Tolan for some reason, because sometimes he won't show up on all, any of the four, then at that point you can do any platform. It doesn't matter which. And again, you don't only need to do one. Again, lots of adds and of course taking phalanxes. There will be snipers in a room and they can be extremely annoying because they can hit you from basically anywhere. So sniper protection is nice to have. I would keep a scout or a sniper available to take them out. Some of them when they're lower, you can take them out with a fusion rifle. But again, some of the higher ones, you're gonna have a hard time hitting them with that. Collect your moats and cleanse. Once you do that, go to the center area of the room. That'll be lit up, and then the room will rotate. What actually is happening is you're rotating among the different walls of the room. It looks like you're actually warping to another room, but that's just a visual effect that Bungie put in. Be careful. Some of the later rooms will have holes that you can fall through. Do this five times, and then two massive bosses will show up that you need to burn down. They're pretty easy. You can use your super, you can use your heavy, whatever, but they're pretty easy to deal with. And again, in this whole room, those are the only two bosses. So don't worry about having super DPS weapons on. Just have things that are going to allow you to survive, take out the snipers, and take out adds where you can. Again, with the build I mentioned, it's pretty easy because you don't even have to use your weapons. You can just kill them with your punch. So the next area is called Singularity, or we affectionately call it Rainbow Road. And if you played Mario Kart in the past, you'll know what we need. Next, you go back to the Wasteland area and go to the other door opposite of how you got in the cube. The boss will actually end up being there, so you know it's the right place because the boss will be sitting outside of it. Once you're in there, you'll see we're talking about this beautiful, gorgeous, like purplish area that, again, a lot of people call the Rainbow Road encounter because it's got ribbons. It looks like Rainbow Road. And if you're not careful, you will fall for your sparrow. For this one, you can spare and walk continuously down the ribbon roads, 
to these open pyramids. There will be a number of enemies along the way, including some snipers. You have to decide if you want to deal with them or not deal with them. One tip I would give you is as you're sparing, you can generally hear when they're shooting or getting ready to shoot. So that's when you can decide to speed up or slow down your sparrow so they can't shoot you. And you can also decide just to walk the entire thing if you're trying to be conservative. Do that. Continue to go through. There is a hidden chest in one of the last pyramids before you exit. And then when you get to the bottom, again, just keep going down. As you get to the bottom, there's an area that will kind of suck you up and take you to the final boss area. So look for that. It looks like kind of rotating concentric, concentric squares, but you'll know it when you see it. The next area is where we get to the boss. The boss is a Cal Echo. Again, when you get into there, there'll be some thrall that you need to kill and a hallway that'll get you to the actual boss room. At the boss room, there's going to be a rally flag, and you'll notice that there, the room has several roof wall areas that you will rotate to similar to the cube. So if you look and you see the roof in this area looks like this, or this wall looks like that, at some point, depending on how many DPS phases, you will end up on that wall, because that's what happens between DPS phases. Start the encounter, you will kill adds and knights for moats again. Again, this room can get overwhelming with the thrall spawning, so I would try to get them under control as quickly as possible. Again, the build I mentioned makes it pretty easy to do that, again, without wasting ammo. You will notice that three areas that are lit around each corner of the room. And you'll notice that's a version of the boss sitting in each of those areas. And they can't, and that can make it more difficult to stay in those areas. What I would do really quickly, gather your moats, pick one of the areas, whether it's light or dark, get the moats that you need, and clear that area as quickly as possible by going and cleansing. Once you cleanse, an ogre will show up. You can use your cover to kind of protect you, but what I would do is I would just as quickly as possible take that guy down, right? You can even, I was using a fusion rifle and I took him out in three shots. Again, not, even though he's an ogre, he's not terribly chonky. You just don't want to get him going. You don't want him to start blasting you with his, his eye attack, right? You just want to as quickly as possible get him down. The great thing once you do that is the area that he spawned at then does not have that version of the boss. So you can use that as a staging area to protect yourself if you run into problems for some reason. At that point, keep cleansing and killing ogres. On the last cleanse, you can ignore the final ogre and head to the middle area. Again, similar to what happened to the cube, and that will take you to the boss arena. The boss arena is like nothing you've ever seen. You'll see the boss on a platform. You'll see a series of platforms going back to a big platform at the very back of the room. He'll shoot a wave of darkness at you. Avoid this as it'll warp you back to the beginning of the room, which isn't a big deal now. It will be later. One reason to avoid this, besides the fact that it takes you further away from the boss and doing DPS, is that the further away from the boss, you get a darkness debuff that's put on you. If that debuff gets to 10, you die. Also, as it increases, you do less damage. So that's one reason to be very careful because if you get into that wave and you get stuck back at the beginning and he's at the very end of the map, there's a chance that you could try to go keep going forward and just die just from trying to reach him. So that's one thing, just be very careful and use cover to help yourself then. At the beginning, I would use a burst DPS super, or in this case, my gathering storm to stick on him so you know that you have guaranteed damage. And then I would move to a platform. You could you can use Wither Horde or Anarchy to do tick damage. So again, it's all about doing damage over time while you're still moving around because your goal here really is to survive and do whatever damage you can do. Snipers will begin to spawn on the plates near the boss and he'll continue to teleport to the back of the room. It's very important to control the snipers as much as possible. You don't necessarily have to kill them all, but just keep in mind they will shoot at you, so use cover or kill them. It's your choice. You want to continue to do chip damage, and then where you can, do your damage on the boss. You know, Use your other weapons. One thing to keep in mind is obviously you have to stay close to the boss so you don't get that debuff. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that if he uses that wave attack on you, you're going to go all the way to the back. You can hide from that wave attack by using the little pillars, that are on each of the portals or each of the platforms to kind of protect yourself from that. Keep that in mind. The platforms are your friends. At the end, he will stay for a bit longer at the back and you can do longer damage. Now, obviously one option is you could save your burst super for this or hopefully you regenerate depending on what your build is. But worst case with this, you can even get close enough to him when he's at this point. Because even if for some reason, because he's on a stable platform, even at some point, if he does the the burst, the attack, the wave attack, and puts you to the back at the very beginning of the room, you know at that point he's going to be close to leaving. When he leaves, all the debuffs and everything disappear. So if you really get desperate at the end, that's one thing to do. But again, my general strategy with this is try to get this into 
I generally can do this in a two phase doing this effect. Sometimes it's three, even if it's four, as long as you're cautious and careful, you'll be able to get through this encounter very easily. Don't try to be a hero and do a bunch of damage and die. That would be unfortunate. Then at that point, you go back to the main room and you rinse and repeat. Again, you flip between the different walls between phases. One thing to keep in mind, the later phases, I think eventually it'll rotate all the way back to the beginning, but the later walls actually have more holes and you have potentially for dying just like in the cube room. So keep that in mind. Keep doing this and then you finish the encounter. You know, this is one of my favorite dungeons in the game. A couple of reasons. One is that it's an amazing area. It's got pretty fun mechanics that it's probably one of the first dungeons where the mechanics started to become more raid-like. Um, it's got some really cool armor. There was an actual armor set that they were going to use for Eververse that when Budgie was having some problems, they made it for free within this uh, this particular dungeon. And the weapons aren't bad. There's some decent weapons. But again, if you're looking to get some of the emblems or achievements for doing solo, or if you're just within the current season trying to get the wishes done, this is an easy way you can do it without a fire team. Um, if you have never tried to solo a dungeon, you can also solo um, Shattered Throne and some other ones are fairly easy. And I'm going to put some guides up for that. I would say this one is the best combination of an interesting set of encounters plus ease of use. So try it out today. Any, any Guardian with a decent build should be able to accomplish that. That's the video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.